Hi friends! Welcome again to KSP and welcome to our third week on our series on Motivate, which is based on our current church-wide campaign on the eight principles of successful parenting. I am Mai. I am a solo parent of four children. We have been a solo parent family for more than 10 years already, since when my youngest was just over a year old. He is now 13 and his siblings are 14, 17, and 20 years old. Today, we will look into the third principle of Motivate, the first letter T for time, in the context of solo parenting. Two weeks ago, we started this series with the letter M for modeling. Zane shared how she applied the parenting principle of modeling in raising her children. Her talk was a great reminder and encouragement to me because she also has four children like me and today all four of her children are responsible productive god-fearing adults to my mind that is proof that the principle of modeling works my major takeaways from zane's talk is number one i am to model the character traits that i want my children to have if i want them to be loving industrious and forgiving or if I want them to be compassionate, proactive, and persevering, I should model those traits. They should see me embody those characteristics in my daily life. Number two, I am not called to model perfection. I do not need to be perfect, thankfully. I do not have to set unrealistic standards for myself as a parent that I cannot meet. I just need to keep it real and be authentic. Be humble enough to accept rebukes and sincerely admit and correct my mistakes when needed. I also remember Pastor Peter saying that the people we have influence over, not just our children, but also our team members at work, our D group members, even our household staff, wherever we are in position of authority, people will remember what we do and not what we say. They will copy what we do and not what we say. He also said that this is true whether or not we believe in Jesus, whether or not we want them to intentionally copy us. And then last week, it was Brother Joel who shared how he used the second principle, open communication, to deepen his relationships with each of his children and continue to grow in their love and respect for each other. He also has grown-up children already, and they're all still happy to spend time together regularly as a family. So to me, yes, principle number two, open communication also works. If this is your first time joining us and you want to catch up on our previous week's principles, you can find our past videos on YouTube. Just look for the CCF Cool Solo Parent Ministry channel or even the CCF main TV channel on YouTube or even Facebook. But this week, I am tasked to share with all of you the third principle, the principle of time and how time builds relationships. When I first learned that I got this assignment, I was very tempted to say no. I have to confess, I have had the Motivate book at home, here at home for a while, but I never found time to read it. There has been conflict between me and my eldest son for the past several weeks already, causing tension in our home. And I really didn't want to admit to my children that I have a big part in causing that conflict. But yes, thankfully I got the call for this assignment and even if I got scared, I prayed. I asked God for the grace and the time to really learn this principle. I ask God for leading and guidance and time to make things right inside my heart and in my household before I had to prepare what I will share with all of you today. And you know what? Just like Tita Chiki always says, God showed up. In the course of our study today, I will share with you how God answered that prayer. I don't know if you can relate with me, but as a solo parent, this is my constant dialogue. Busy ako. I do not have time. I am a solo parent of four. I have to juggle work and housework and budget and homeschool and discipleship, among other things. 
I do not have time or resources to take each of my children out on one-on-one -on -one dates. I cannot afford constant interruptions when I work. And yet, today's principle is building relationships take time. If you look at all the other Motivate principles, modeling, open communication, and in the coming weeks we'll study intimacy, vision, affirmation, teaching and training. All these principles, they are hinged on making time. All these principles need time to be implemented. But yeah, it takes time to make time. To make time for bonding, for cuddling, to make time to listen to a teenager rant and tell stories when you still have a work deadline and you still have to cook dinner it's a constant battle between urgent versus important and personally even if i know i should not sacrifice what is important over what is urgent i often still do now if you're like me always feeling pressed for time I hope you will also find solace in this crazy beautiful truth that I learned while preparing for this talk. And that truth is, there is always enough time. In the first few verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, the writer talks about there being a time for everything. To everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. It also goes on to say that there's a time to weep and laugh, a time to embrace and not to embrace, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. When our priorities are clear, there is time for all the important work. There is time even for a solo mom like me to pause and look a child in the eye while they explain a Gen Z joke that I don't understand. There's also time to acknowledge them as they talk and be present and be in awe of how they are all truly unique and wonderfully made. Precious individuals with their own personalities. There is time to pause and remember Psalm 139 verse 14. There is time to bring to mind Psalm 127 verse 3 and be thankful. So yes, there is always enough time. There is always enough time but there is never time to waste. Well, there's always enough time for all the things that matter. There is no time to waste. There's no time to put off things like apologizing, or hugging, or connecting with loved ones. Now more than ever, COVID has made us realize how unpredictable and how short life is. We cannot afford to waste our time being angry, being bitter, or neglecting family. So how? How do we actually fit all the things that need to be done in a day? I remember one of my work managers saying, Tell me how you spent your last 72 hours and I will tell you how you will spend the rest of your life. For this video, I had to take an honest look at how I spend my daily 24 hours. How much time went to important tasks? How much time did I actually spend on the children? so they know that I see them and I appreciate them. And how much time went to social media, mindlessly scrolling and other sorts of idleness. It is actually very embarrassing to admit just how much time went to waste for me. Now, I'm not a business expert, so I cannot say that viewing time as an investment is something that I grasp well. My reasoning is, I don't spend time with you because I want to earn a profit. I spend time with someone because I like them and I enjoy being with them. But because time is actually our most important resource, it makes sense to view it like an investment and to invest it wisely. To invest means to expect an income or a return. And when we invest, we think about how we invest so that we invest our resource or use our resource well and we maximize our returns. Also, just like investments, the earlier you start investing, the sooner you can start reaping rewards. The earlier you start, the better the dividends. And the more you put in, the more you earn. Now, I know I do not have a lot of time, so I should be wise and invest only my time with people important to me. And in the same manner, I am now realizing that I should also value the time that other people give me. 
I mentioned at the start that we were at conflict at home recently. I was putting off making amends with my children because I was waiting for them to apologize. In my mind, I thought they should make the first move. Thankfully, God sent me a nudge to seriously study and apply Motivate so that I have something to share with you today. It made me realize that I should invest in communicating with them instead of being too proud to listen. I asked my children for forgiveness. I really listened to them and made amends. And immediately our house was transformed into a happy cooperative home. Imagine if I did it sooner. Or conversely, what if I waited? More days, more weeks, maybe even months of hurt brewing in our hearts? Anger brewing in our hearts? Yikes. So really the benefits of intentionally investing time to be loving and understanding are not just eternal. The benefits are presently available too. In our home, that means nobody needs to be on guard. There's no conflict, no shouting, and everyone is cooperating and making an effort to be pleasant. I thank you, Lord. So again, do not put off investing time to build relationships. Do it today, not tomorrow, not next year. CCF did a poll last week asking what we thought was more important. Was it quantity time or quality time? I asked my daughter what she thought about it and she said you can't choose one. It should be both. A parent cannot be constantly present physically but be on their phone or doing other things. Parents also cannot tell their children that you have my full attention child but you only have five minutes. Now in terms of relationships, we can't really measure how much time is enough time, can we? 20 minutes, 2 hours, is that enough? Human relationships are not exactly like workouts or physical exercise where we can compute how many minutes we need to give to training. But just like physical training, we have to be consistent. We have to commit to be 100% present. Just like exercise, we have to commit to be there for as long as needed. Thankfully, it does not mean we have to wait on the children day in and day out. I keep in mind the order of priorities that the church taught us. Number one is God. Number two is family or my children. Number three is livelihood and work. Number four is ministry and others. And as long as the children consistently that we got our priorities right, then we are good. I know I am not consistently wholly present when I am with my own children until this time. But thankfully, I get constant reminders and encouragement from you, my church family. And this series is helping me change my views and my ways. In preparing this talk, I have had to pause writing several times so that I could fully listen when the children wanted to talk. And I did not get upset. I did not get upset at the interruptions. They've also read parts of my draft and they've offered some insights and suggestions. Preparing this talk has also allowed me to have a better understanding of what Pastor Peter calls magic moments. The way I see it, magic moments are times when you feel a real connection between family members because there's acceptance and love and understanding making you content in the comfort and the peace and the joy of the moment. Pastor Peter will probably call me out if my definition is wrong. Now I treasure it when my children talk about their plans and when we all laugh out loud on family inside jokes, when somebody sings out a random part of a song and other family members pick up, when they open up and tell me their fears and worries and annoyances, I love it so much. And there are few times even that by God's grace I have the words to assure them. Now these moments, we cannot really plan. We cannot really create magic moments. Pastor Peter says we ought to be on the lookout for them. We can, however, make the home conducive to magic moments by making the children used to our presence. They should be used to us being around them. And they should also know that we are interested in what interests them. We can make them know that they can talk to us about anything by being readily available for them and by keeping short records of wrongs. 
As a solo parent, I used to think that it was up to me to do whatever it takes to make sure my kids all go to good schools and grow up to be professionals. Successful na ako noon kapag naging mga doctors and engineers na sila. I now realize that successful parenting is not about making sure your children are successful. It is not about making them obedient and it's not about making them finish top of their class in school. Successful parenting is about me doing my job as a parent well. And that job is to love them and guide them and support them. And my job is to live out the truth and the reality of my faith so that they too will choose to give their lives and their hearts to Jesus in their time. And when I come to the end of my life, I have been a successful parent. If God is to say to me, well done, good job, my faithful servant. Now, if my children, they become successful doctors in this life, then that is just a bonus. So yeah, if my job is to love and guide and encourage them, how do I go about doing that exactly? I do that by seeking God and asking Him what He wants me to do moment by moment and actually doing it even when it's hard and even when it means i have to give up some things that i enjoy doing that might not be good for the children like zane said uh, i was recently talking to one of my own brothers about our shared hope to see the generation after us our children we want to see them live their lives with less drama and less dysfunction and less emotional baggage than ourselves how we hope to see them live meaningful, truly happy lives, and how we are resolved and prepared to do our part to make that happen. Now, I told my eldest son about this, and he, my son, he said, Mom, that's not going to be easy because most of the world and the society, it's all messed up, and most individual homes merely reflect all the things that are wrong in this world. Now, both my brother and my son, they said all those in a better way, but I'm just paraphrasing immensely and poorly. My son's point is, it will be hard to change our lives because of many factors, and a lot of them are external. But within our own family, we can change. It will be hard, but our family lives and our family relationships can be improved. He went on to say that maybe if we persist and keep at it, we might also influence others to hope the same for their own families. And when they start their own families and their circles increase, then maybe more and more families will have joy rather than drama. And then maybe that circle can be big enough to influence the greater society. Now, I'm closing with this story because just earlier this year, conversations like this with either my brother or my son would be almost impossible. I really cannot say that we considered ourselves close and we don't easily talk about serious stuff. That is, until we got to spend a lot of good time together during this quarantine. I am sharing this also because just maybe you will also hope to see your own families live truly meaningful lives and see that it is possible. It is my prayer that this study on time will help us look at our children and our family with a fresh perspective. That they are not only responsibilities or obligations that we need to feed, to send to school and then put to bed, but rather we would see our children as precious, wonderful blessings who are with us for only a while. And in that manner, we will also look at our roles as parents with a fresh perspective. And we are how we are not just dishwashers, we are not just laundry ladies or ATM cards, but we are God's appointed to model, affirm, influence, and teach and train our children God's truths for His glory and His honor. God bless and keep all of our families. Thank you.